Hello my friends, my name is Dragonheart the Prince of Wales and welcome to a beginner's tutorial guide for Fall of the Samurai. This is the Fall of the Samurai campaign in Total War Shogun 2. It's a DLC which you can get on Steam or your copy of Total War Shogun 2. Now before we begin I must stress that this guide is a beginner's guide. So that means that it's for people who have yet to play this campaign or people who have only just bought Shogun 2. So it's basically there for the very novice players. If you're someone that's put 100 hours into a, a Total War campaign like Shogun 2, then you're probably not going to find this video that useful. It's probably worth clicking off the video. But for those of you that want to stay and find out something, by all means, stick around and hopefully I can show you a few things for your new Total War player. I also want to make a quick mention as well that I have done many of these beginner guides for Total War, which people seem to have found quite helpful. I have put the thumbnails of them on the screen right now. There will also be a playlist in the description below where you can check out all of those videos. Okay, so Fall of the Samurai, this is what it looks like when you click on the actual campaign. You've got the Shogunate and you've got the Imperials. I think of it as melee and guns, basically. That's how I break it down. So the Shogunate has the Obama. Not related to Barack Obama, of course. Um, it gives you the faction information here tells you some of the stats they have very similar to other total war games this is we've then got the shogunate itself uh the sendai or part of the shogunate i should say rather um we've got their stats here we have the josai Azu, and nagaoka and for the imperials we have the satsuma which start off in the south down by here we have tosa which on the island here, which the Chosokabe occupy in the regular Shogun 2 campaign. We have the Chosu, which are where roughly the Mori start off. The Su, which are right in the centre by here. And then finally, the Saga, which are right down at the bottom. So the Shogunate are sort of in the north, all up here. And the Imperials are all in the south, down here. And they have all their stats and stuff as well. We'll start off with Satsuma in this campaign. Uh, I recommend with them, probably because they're easy, if you go through all of them. The Jawsai are probably the easiest one in the north according to the initial challenge. Maybe start with them if you're going to start with the Shogunate faction. And then Satsuma probably the best one for the Imperials. But the Tosa are also easy. And yeah, so Tosa or Satsuma if you're a brand new player playing your very first campaign with this. Like other Total War games, you have your short campaign your long campaign and your domination campaign for the purpose of this we're going to just do a short campaign also side note quick segue i am thinking of starting a fall of the samurai campaign on my channel soon so if you are liking this tutorial and liking my style of commentary then by all means stay tuned and that will be on the channel at some point you have your game difficulty so you can go on easy normal hard very hard and legendary now legendary difficulty in this uh, game Battle realism's off, it means you don't have the mini-map in the top corner of your screen and you have camera restrictions as well. I definitely wouldn't recommend jumping into Legendary straight away, especially on Shogun 2, because I find Shogun 2 to be a lot more challenging than most of the other Total War games. But probably normal or hard for the very first campaign. Just get your first campaign under your belt and then bring it up a notch. I'm going to put it on hard. For this tutorial i'm quite comfortable with uh, hard campaigns so let's begin so what i'll do guys i will hit the start button and i'll make a quick edit and see you on the campaign map okay so welcome to the campaign map now this works very much in the same way as uh, regular shogun 2 so you get your little starter video which i've cut out for the purpose of this and then the lovely lady in the top corner tells you a little bit of information about what's going on in the world how you can obtain victory basically just going to get rid of her for now Straight away we get this that pops up which is mission issued so it tells you a little bit about what's going on and then it gives you an objective in this case increase your clan's development level and my reward will be 12 turns of inspired endeavors which is a plus 50 percent wealth generated by all buildings across all provinces quite a good reward to get early on and we're straight into the campaign so much like shogun 2 the buttons apply all the same WASD to move around the campaign map. You hold down the middle mouse button and you can move around your camera on the map like so. You can left click things 
to select different things. If I want to click on Osumi to select it, I can. If I want to click on Satsuma, I can as well. If I want to select this army, I can also do that. If you want to get more information on a particular unit, you can just hover over it and it tells you the stats. Or I can right click and it'll bring up the Total War Wikipedia and tells you more details about a particular unit. When you're first playing this game, I would spend a good 10-15 minutes just going through some of the units you start off with just to see what their strengths and weaknesses are. For example, this is Levy Infantry. You can see that they are weak against cavalry and they have poor accuracy and a slow reload rate. Probably don't want to stay, stay with them towards your end of your campaign. So once I'm able to upgrade to better units, I might get rid of them. I also want to be wary about putting them against cavalry when I'm in a battle. This little guy by here, he's an agent. Seth Patrick, his name is. He is a foreign veteran. Agents can be used to attack enemies. So, for example, who are we at war with? Who we start off at war with? I haven't played this campaign in a while. Oh, here you go. I'm going to move him for now. The yellow on the map shows you his movement range. So we're going to move towards Hayuga for now. Which is currently held by the Nobioka. Maybe next turn we can use him. Now, we have money. In the bottom is 8,000 Koku. And then it's shown me how much I'm bringing in a turn, which is 713. That's what those two down there mean. This is clan management. Click on it. It brings up your family. It brings up your faction. So our clan traits that we start off with. The Emperor's Ambition. So administration plus 5 reduction to administrative costs. Minus 10% cost for foreign veteran actions. That agent we had then was a foreign veteran. So that's useful for him. Leadership is plus 15 increased to the general's radius of influence. So that's pretty good on a battlefield. And Dominion. We begin with two provinces which you've just seen. Clan development level 1. And it tells you what we get with that as well. And the fame that goes up. The more battles you win. The more territory you win. The more that grows. The higher that grows. The more jealous other factions will get of you. And the more likely they will declare war on you. Allegiance is pro-emperor. Treasury, 8,000, which I've already mentioned, and it tells you a bit more about it there. Gives you a little rundown of your diplomacy. So in this case, we're enemies of the Nobioka. We are trade partners of the Kumamoto. And the vassals are the Taganamashima. Victory conditions, so loyal provinces, 36 out of 35. And it tells you then what you need to do. Total victory, provinces held, etc. And it tells you the current mission we just read as well. So it gives you a big rundown of everything. Your family... This is important. Family is always important. So my daimyo here, Shimazu Hisamitsu, or Hisamitsu. He's only rank one, but he has got very good honor to begin with. He's got a wife as well. And then he has a uh, son, Tadayoshi. He's got very, very good loyalty. And again, he's only a rank one. You need to try and level him up and try and keep him alive. You can, of course, convert your allegiance as well. Um, so we are currently pro... What was it? Pro Emperor, but you can change that to Pro Shogunate if you want to change it later on uh, from here. General, we have a general. We can adopt him into our family if we want to. For example, if my if my general died and I want to bring in another son quickly, I could perhaps do that. Or um, if I did well in battle, maybe I wanted to promote him or something, I could bring him in. I can also give him different things here. I can give him Inspector General, Controller, Chief of Staff, Commander in Chief. Or I could kick, kick him uh, completely <laughs> if I wanted to be mean. Then you have your records tab here which tells you battles you've won, lost, money you've spent. Just complete details of the entire campaign. So that's what clan management does. Now diplomacy. All the factions you currently know are here. Obviously factions all the way up here in the north where the Date uh, lands are from regular Shogun, uh, Shogun 2. Can't see them yet until I actually meet them on the campaign. But these are the factions you start off with with the Satsuma. So we know the Kumamoto are um, a very good, very friendly faction. We're trading with them currently. And we know that we've got this faction by here. They're a vassal. That's why we have this logo. The Tanegashima. And they start off a little island just off from where we start, just below us. They're friendly, although they cannot trade because the ports in their hometown are at full capacity. Now the Saga, who are quite close to where we are, they are indifferent towards us. They have... The same allegiance, so they're plus 75, but they do have past grievances. So, they are a possibility to try and take them out, perhaps. So, maybe an early target for us there. And obviously, we start off at war with the Nobioka, which have this land by here. So, 
I think the best thing to do when you start off a new game is go to whoever you're at war with. In this case, it's the Nobioka, which start off over here. It looks like they have an army of about three units. They have another army in here. So there are two armies altogether. Obviously, if you're going to go to war, you want to recruit units. That so happens, we have a general or an army here. Takamori's army. He has Kari Kashi, spear levies, line infantry, and levy infantry. Now, if I was to go to Satsuma, click on the recruit tab, I can currently recruit levy infantry or spear levy from there. If I go to Asumi, I can get the same stuff there. But if I go into construction, you'll see I can upgrade from a town to a large town, a stronghold to a fortress. I got a spare building slot here. If you see the little hammer sign by here, it's a spare building slot. And by going over and hovering over these different things, it tells you what I can get. I can get a wooden cannon if I wanted to. I could get an inn. I could get a cadet school, which is good because I get line infantry and saber cavalry. Probably the best thing to go for early in the campaign would be that. I can get a police station. I can get a cottage. And then it goes on. Some things, though, you'll have to get technology. Which leads me nicely into clan development. So clan development is basically your technology tab in this game. So you can get epic architecture for civil policy to begin with. Or you can get uh, a ski, military technology. Each tab has different traits and different things. And each thing is clan development on the left hand side. So when it says to you obtain clan development level 1. That would be getting all of these all six of these to begin with at the start so the three civil and the three military if you hover over it tells you what you get so my clan wide happiness goes up by one by getting this and all my construction costs go down pretty good thing to get early on and it only takes four turns as you go down the line though that would take seven turns that would take nine that would take 15 and you can only get the certain things by unlocking the things previously so it'll take even longer so you must bear that in mind but we're going to go with epic architecture to begin with now we do have a ship, we have a navy, and what I'm going to do with my navy, I'm going to march it, or, or sail it rather, up the coastline towards Hyuga. It's going to take us a couple of turns to get there. There are our, our vassals by here, on this little island, Tanegashima. Now I'm thinking we've got our southern area by here, yes, Spear Levy. If I get you to go up here, and if I get you to march towards him, by hovering over and we get the two lines like that, that means you can join the forces together, which is what we're going to be doing next turn. I'm also going to look at what we have in Satsuma. We have some more spears. Again, I'm going to get them to join up. And what I'm going to do with Osumi is I'm going to actually construct the cadet school. I want to get line infantry. Now, it's going to take three turns. I'm going to have to wait three turns. In the meantime, I could recruit more spears. And you can sort of hover over and see what's the best thing. They both can hide in woodland. They both have 200 men. The morale is slightly better on the spears. They have a bonus against cavalry as well. So we will go with spear levies. And we will just spam a few of them. Just get three of them for the time being until we are able to actually get ourselves some line infantry. We do obviously start off with some line infantry. Only, well, only the one by here really. But line infantry can make a big difference early on in a campaign like this so it's definitely worth that I do have money left over I have 4,000 well nearly 5,000 actually I always think it's worth upgrading your settlement straight away your capital Satsuma is so what we're going to do upgrade that it's going to take five turns but it'll be worth it also quick note Satsuma is our capital because it has a little star icon but there we have two settlements you can see that's obviously the capital our enemies have Hyuga but again they only have one um, one settlement so it's obviously going to be the capital you go up here the Kumamoto again they've probably only got one settlement starting off with your aim in this campaign if I can make this map be uh, bigger is probably take over the whole island of Hyuga first that gives you a nice little stranglehold on the campaign it's definitely worth uh, thinking about that and doing that uh, to begin with so I've moved my ship, I've upgraded my buildings, I've moved some of my armies about, I've looked at diplomacy. There's one more thing I haven't looked at on the campaign map, and that is, of course, the finance screen. This is the finance screen, it's the little one on the end by here. So you can tax your economy, you have minimal, but only get 176 a turn, and you see the bottom right corner goes down. 
move it up, it goes up to 500, move it up again to 700, move it up, I'm getting 800 a turn, but then you see that's gone red. That's gone red because the population can't take it, I'm taxing them too much. So you've got to try and find the right balance. Normal tends to be the best way to start off. It breaks down even further by here, how much tax income you get in, what your army upkeep currently is. You could, of course, auto-manage, which will, of course, help out as well. And it gives you some more um, information here as well. Mod 3 reduces town growth across all provinces, and we get minus 4 happiness across all provinces like that. Only minus 2 when I have it low, though. But I'm going to have it normal just to get as much information, as much, sorry, as much money as I possibly can. Trade, so we are trading with the Kumamoto of the value of 82. That's 82 a turn, and then summary, and again, it just gives you a little breakdown. You don't have to worry too much about going into it and, and really, you know, getting your notepad out and your calculator. <laughs> you don't have to go that far with it, but it's worth checking every once in a while uh, in your campaign. So I'm happy enough with this, so once you're happy, you click the end turn button, which is the big button in the bottom right-hand corner, and that's my first turn successfully accomplished on this uh, campaign map so far. So the AI will have their turns. Now the good thing with this game is the campaign uh, turns go quite quickly um, when you compare it to a game like Empire Total War, for example. Now anything that happens of note, it'll pop up in the right-hand side by here. It says Soldiers Recruited, so if I click on that, it tells me I've recruited Spear Levy at Osumi, which is what I've done. I've got one of them by here. I've also got lots of troops going to merge with each other by here, so I'm just going to get all of these together in one army. Put them all together. Nice little bit of an army forming up by here. It looks like they're on the move as well. They're mobilizing. So it might be worth me sticking my other spear in this army as well. Just to be a little bit more defensive. And my agent, I can actually move him up. This is what I'm going to do. It's going to scout ahead to see if they've got anything else hidden up here. It doesn't look like they have. They've actually left Hyuga undefended. And this army is currently mobilizing. Now my ships... I'm just going to get them to move up the coastline in case they have any ships that I can blockade or do something with. Now, the thing you'll notice with my ships, a very thin yellow circle around the ship. In this game, you, get, you can actually have coastal bombardment. Now, this is a new feature specifically for Fall of the Samurai. I do think they're bringing this feature back for um, Total War Shogun, or Total War Shogun, uh, Total War Warhammer 2. Which is pretty quite, quite nice. It's a nice feature of this campaign. It's the only time it's ever been used in Total War. When you have a battle, so for example, if I'm attacking this army by here with this army, and he was able to get up there this turn, you'll see that the little red line appears by there. It means he's in reinforcement range, he's in that sphere. And it means when I fight him there, I get a couple of chances to bombard him navally from the coastline, which is really, really cool. It's really, really um, worthwhile. It does demoralize their armies that are marching towards you slightly and it can take out some of their troops before they even get your lines so it's definitely something to consider but as there's no navy here i'm just going to actually attack yuga but it says your bomb bomb failed to cause any damage unfortunately but it was definitely worth having a go uh, at attacking him from there we're in a nice defensive position here with this army and we do have quite a bit of money left over we are currently recruiting lots of spears at osumi here I could upgrade my harbour to give me more troops, to give me a bit more money. I'm going to look at Satsuma. I don't think I can recruit, uh, upgrade anything here. I can't really recruit much. I can get an agent. Now this little icon by here is an agent. Much in the same way as Total War Shogun 2's regular campaign where you get like Kisho Ninja. Uh, and you can get uh, Metsuke's, things like that. Now, this is an Inshin, um, Inshin Shisisi, I can't say it. Um, I'm going to get him though. He's an agent, basically. If I right-click over here, you'll see. Uh, they use much the same way. They can use be used to attack the oncoming enemies. You can harass them. You can get them to lose morale before battles. You can try and get them to open the gates. They're working very much the same way. I'm going to spend a bit of money on him. I think that's pretty much all I can do this turn. So I'm going to save my money. I'm going to quickly check uh, my diplomacy tab just in case now the saga i could trade with now i was thinking do i attack them or don't i attack them i'm thinking for now they are up on the island out of the way by there so perhaps maybe early trade is beneficial to me so i'm just going to request trade it's satisfactory but i like to push the boundaries so i'm going to actually ask them for some money 
as, as it turns out, we are the bigger faction, so maybe I can use a bit of leverage. If we ask him for, say, 500 Koku, when it says we might be able to come to an agreement, it means that they're not going to. But if you get, for example, uh, 150 maybe, still says we might be able to come to an agreement. Might not work in this now. Say 30 Koku. Nope, they're not, they're not willing to do it for 30. How about, say, I don't know, 10 Koku? Okay, they're being really stingy. They are being really stingy. One Koku. No, okay, so they will. They won't do it for any sort of money, but they will do it for trade. And I'll say, yeah, we'll do it for trade. So we'll, we'll make proposal. And they're happy with that. Amazing. So we've got another trade partner. And we've got more money now coming in. So if I break it down, we're getting 81 from Saga. 82 now from Kumamoto. So a bit more money each turn. You gotta think of it as well, that trade can fund like an extra couple of units for me perhaps, so it is definitely worth doing it. I could recruit a gunboat from here. It only costs 378. It would help strengthen my navy. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get a couple of gunboats. And I'm happy enough, so I'm gonna end my turn again. Now we will be having a combat uh, tutorial soon, which I think we'll probably do this moment, because it looks like they have actually moved up. Which will be lovely. Mission issued. Capture the following province, Hyuga. Now I could just go straight for Hyuga. I'm thinking they're going to be here somewhere. They're probably going to get ready to actually ambush me. I'm just going to send this troop up in that direction to sort of go towards Satsuma in case they try to cut me off. I've still got over a bit of money left over. I'm going to recruit and I'm just going to get a spear levy there. Now I've got one more turn to get the cadet school. Again, I could bombard Hyuga. I have done bombardment results. I've hit their cadet school and I've weakened some of their ships as well. So that's good. My agent here, I can actually move him back down in case he can spot the enemy around here for me. Which he might be able to do. And he has. Now again, I can use him. I could challenge them to single combat. Or I can harass the army. Now, the chance of success is only 47%. But it does cost 810. I could afford to do it, but I'll have to wait, unfortunately, until next turn. So their army's got about 7 units. we got slightly more. I think we can actually do them. And we can actually reach them this turn. So now we know where they are. If I take that army out, I've pretty much got a clean walk straight through to Hyuga. We know there's nothing else here. So what we're going to do, we're going to click on our army. We're going to right-click onto here. That sends him off to fight. Now you'll see I can auto resolve this, which is about 50 50. I might win, I might lose. But I'm going to fight this manually. So, what I'm going to do, guys, is going to make a quick edit here, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Okay, so I've skipped past the loading screen, and you'll be greeted with this weather conditions. So, we can wait or we can start deployment. Now, if it's raining or snowing, you might want to wait to get better conditions so you can see. It's going to say current weather dry, so I'm going to take that, I'm going to start deployment. And we're straight in. Now, because I'm playing on hard difficulty and not legendary, I got the campaign map camera. I can make that bigger and expand it to be really big if I wanted to. Just so you can see where we're going on the campaign, on the battle map, sorry. But I'm just going to have it at the normal size. If you want to, you can take it off. You can hide radar. The little button by there. Uh, you'll see that we've got a yellow and red bar. That's the balance of power. We have a clock by here. We can actually increase the speed so we can go normal speed, double speed or triple speed. We can go sort of half speed and we can also pause as well. So if you want to pause early on when you first start playing this game, it's definitely worth it. Okay, control eight selects all my units. I can click anywhere and they go anywhere. If I do control and I, it brings up just the infantry. So control I, like do it again, control I, just my infantry. And what I'm going to do is going to drag them, have just my infantry like that. If I do control M, it selects just my missiles, so again, I've got them selected. I'm going to do that. I believe, I think it's Control c the Cavalry, which it is, Control c which is my general on its own. I'm going to pop him just behind the line, like so. And what I'm going to do, if I do Control a again, I select them all, or I can just click and drag to select them all, like that. If I press G, I group them into a locked unit, so... If I click anywhere, it stays in that formation all the time. If I do Control G, it locks them, but it locks them into any specific group like so. I'm just going to lock them into one group. I can put them into a formation, so I can do double line standard. I can do a grand battery. 
Cavalry heavy right. These are good things to start off with if you're not sure about formations. Cavalry heavy left. I haven't got much cavalry, so there's no point. Melee in the front line. That's what I was going for, melee in the front line, basically. So we're going to use that. We'll get rid of that panel. And once you're happy, you click the start battle button. Now, the enemy it looks like they're up here. They're just coming onto the battlefield right now. So they got two cavalry. They got some spears. Looks like they got some guns. They got matchlock Kachi here. And they got line infantry. So we have to be very careful here. So what we're going to do, you can either click forward and they'll march in that position like so. You can use your uh, directional buttons to move them forward as well. So for example, if I um, halt them a moment. I can get them to move forward. Like move forwards like that. I can get them to turn left. Turn right. There's lots of other commands you can use as well. This is just the basic ones you're going to be using. If you want to see where they walk in, hold down spacebar. And it shows you exactly where they're all going to form. You can see right now that's where they're all going to form. I want to basically keep this formation until we actually get to the enemy. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to look ahead now. At my formation. And I think if we do it sort of... Like so, that's pretty decent. We'll keep that formation, we'll work it out. Now, if you want to zoom in on a particular unit, like my general, press the insert button, and you zoom in to a to a basically a point of view kind of uh, view. Something which first appeared in this game in Total War Shogun 2, and then Rome 2 sort of expanded on it and did the whole unit cam thing, which is basically what this was uh, originally. If you press delete, you hover in sort of overhead like this, like an overhead sort of view. You press the N button, you can zoom right in. If you wanted to, I could zoom right in to a particular troop, like that. And if you press the K button, you get rid of the UI completely. So if you want to do that, it's quite useful if you want to do like uh, machinima cinematics, that sort of thing on YouTube. You could have the two armies lined up like this. You you could uh, get your mouse cursor off by um, your recording software and then you're good to go. You get nice little battle animations and stuff going on. Okay, so what we're going to do, like I said, we're going to get this sorted out. So we're going to triple speed this. We're going to press fast forward to get the battle to move on. Triple speed it till it's formed up. Go back to play. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get my line infantry. So I'm going to drag and drop them. I mean my infantry rather than my melee infantry. Make them nice and long like so. I'm going to actually group them into group 2. And then my line infantry are going to be as wide as them behind. And they're going to be their own group as well. So I've got now two big groups and my general's just going to be behind covering. Just like that. So we know we outnumber them. We're going to be quite aggressive in this battle. What we're going to do... I'm going to issue an attack order, and because it's on lock group, they'll basically march forward and attack anything it meets in a forward position. I'm going to do exactly the same with my uh, in line infantry. They're going to just follow behind and start shooting, but I think what we will do is we'll actually have you go out on the one flank, and we'll move you out on the other flank. Otherwise, I'll be shooting into my own men. My general's just going to stay down the center for now. I'm just going to move him like this. I'm going to try and make it nice and wide to try and envelop the enemy if at all possible. That's what we'll be aiming for in this particular battle. Now it looks like they got line infantry on the move here. I'm actually going to tell my troops, if you have, if you press R, or if you hit this unit, this little button by here, they'll actually run towards them. Obviously it quickens up the battle a little bit. I'm going to get you to attack those matchlock Kachi for me. I want to get you to attack those Yari Kachi for me. My general is going to go left flank. Down here, left flank. I want to get you to fire into there. Fire at wills on. That's good. Fire at wills on for both of them. They're all going to go charging in now. As you can see, they're all going to go charging in. Bang, bang, bang. Some units have special abilities. So for example, this unit by here, Yari Kachi. Rapid advance. I'm going to press that now. Gives them a small bonus as they go charging in. I think it's a small charge bonus they actually get. 
Okay, I'm gonna get my line infantry even closer to the action. Looks like we're losing the right flank quite heavily. Just gonna pull off one of my troops here. I'm just gonna gradually select units, get them all in. Okay, I'm gonna get you to shoot on the spears for me. My general's got 42 left. I wanna get him out of there now though. He's been in there too long, you'll lose too many men in that battle. We've got spear levies in there, let them do the damage. Get my general out there to safety. You'll notice above the general's head he's got a yellow bar. That's his morale. Green's good. Yellow's medium. Red is bad. Troop that's over here, he's got red. If I hover over it, it says he's tired, he's shaken, he's concerned with the casualties lost during the battle. We have to be very careful with stuff like that. It looks like we're not doing too well, actually. It's kind of mixed. We are up against the general now, though. His general's in battle here. If we can take the general out, we'll be looking a lot better. Okay, we've got more troops on its way. we actually got a chance to take out the other general here. We're going to shoot him from point-blank range. He's come out of the, the melee by here, and we've got troops shooting at his horses by here. And we've got my general now lining up a charge. I'm just going to let him lose some more troops first of all. Actually, I'm going to charge into this and help out my unit this year. But we've got this general being shot at from this side, and we've got my troops shooting from this side as well. Making a bit of a meal of this, but I think we'll be okay. We might be okay now. Okay, we've charged in. These are now shaken. That charge seemed to have helped out. And my general can actually rally to give a small morale boost to my troops. He can also inspire a unit to give them a morale buff as well. I'm now going to pull out with my general, though. Don't want to keep my general in there for too long. I'm going to let you to keep firing on their general because he's getting shot at. And you've got quite a lot of troops left over my line infantry. You're just going to keep shooting in. I'm going to turn you around, and you've come back, so I'm going to turn you around just by clicking and dragging you as well. Looks like we've got them around on all, fight, or all sides now. You can see lots of yellow, not much of them left. They're actually going to rout, and they have routed. So we won the battle. Wasn't clean. You can see my infantry, or my line infantry, and levy infantry did quite well. But the, the main bulk of my force did poorly. You can continue the battle to hunt them down, try and get a bit more experience. And to try and you know obviously kill them off or just end the battle there and then i'm just going to end it there and then if you're happy with that battle and you want to watch it again you could save a replay maybe even send it to one of your friends if you want to upload it to youtube and show uh maybe your subscribers uh your favorite battles or do even your own series like a battle replay series totally up to you but um that's the battle so we deployed slightly more than them we lost less than them got more remaining they don't have any remaining we demolished them and we won. So the plan worked out in this tutorial. And that's a good start to the tutorial for us. Because even though we're suffering attrition because we're in enemy territory in the winter. We have a, we have a chance to go to Hyuga now. Which we know only got one guy there. And we can go and take that out with this army. You've got to remember how many turns will it take them to raise troops. Probably a few. We can probably get there in three turns. And I can also bombard with this as well. And i have also going to be able to recruit with one more turn line infantry which is going to be the bulk of my army and anybody that's got spears is not going to stand a chance against line infantry that pretty much brings the basics of this game to a conclusion if you've stuck around for this video i want to thank you very much for watching this far in it means a lot to me i like to help out people as much as i can uh in these uh in these games i love total war i've been playing total war for a long time i've been doing youtube for over four years now and most of my tutorial videos that I've done in the past, people have been very fond of them and have gone back and watched them and they found them helpful. So if that's the case, then by all means, let me know in the comment section below as that would be absolutely amazing. And like I said earlier in the video, I will be doing a, a series with this game at some point in the near future on my channel. So look out for that, guys, if you want to see that. I've been Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales. Thank you for watching, guys. Until next time, goodbye.